Thank you very much, uh, Marta. Uh, before uh, opening the floor to questions, I would like to thank our esteemed panelists again, um, and also our rapporteur, Alex Masson, who's sitting over there, uh, very diligently scribbling away, taking notes. Uh, thank you very much. I'm sure it's, it's not, a, not an easy task. Um, I would also like to ask if maybe our panelists would like to react to each other's, um, each other's interventions. Well, I just wanted to thank the partnership for organizing uh, uh, a very useful, uh, it was not a seminar, it was a symposium on recognition of, uh, of non-formal and informal learning. Uh, I was having a chance to be uh, a part of it and uh, I'm very much looking forward to, to receive the final documents which I think can move us um, was forward in, in terms of recognition. So uh, stay uh, hungry for the information uh, that the Council of Europe and the uh, European Commission will produce soon. Yeah, yeah I, would, um, I would also like to say a few things um, related to um, the other presentations which have more or less focused more on the youth issue which is of course very important, but let's not forget that enabling environment for volunteering should also think about other age groups. Um, we live in an aging Europe, so actually there are more adults and elderly people in Europe than young people. This is not necessarily good or bad, this is just as it is. So when we talk about the enabling environment, we of course need to think and take into consideration the concerns and the specificities of the other age groups also, because the enabling environment needs to enable everyone to volunteer. We're also um, starting uh, in 2012 with the active um, aging year, the European Year of Active Aging and Internet Generational Solidarity, if I say it right. Um, so um, this will be um, another reason to focus more also <coughs> on, other, on other age groups. And um, yeah, just another, another um, observation on this, that the youth will grow um, adult and grow old. And then we really need to think on a long term that um, in designing the enabling environments, we start with the youth, but we continue as adults and we end up as elderly active volunteers. So we need to really think broadly when we talk about the enabling environment. <laughs> um, thank you very much for bringing this up. Um, this is something that in this consultation process that we had, an online consultation, that was the first feedback, of course, of many of the Alliance mm -hmm. members as well to the first draft charter, which is now uh, the current draft that we are working with is not focused on youth but it's mm -hmm. focused on volunteers of all ages. And regarding the next year, we're also very much looking forward as European Youth Forum cooperating with Age, who's also mm -hmm. following a, a rights-based approach. And uh, so thank you for bringing this mm -hmm. up. I've already seen a few hands um, in the room. Um, I'm actually wondering, is there a microphone in the room or am, am I going to, is the microphone gonna have to be passed around? Mara Flanagan from uh, CSV and Voluntary Europe, and I just wanted to say something about the Council of Europe, because uh, our network in particular, a member of the Alliance since 2006 also, uh, worked very hard because many of our members are in the countries of the Council of Europe to try and get recognition by both uh, the Council of Europe and the European Union for this year. And we did, in fact, succeed in December 2010, I think on about the 15th of December. The Parliamentary Assembly agreed that there would be a dual year in the Council of Europe. It was a rapporteur, Monsieur Volonté, who made that report to the Council of Europe. So I think as a background to the year, this maybe facilitated some of the youth work, as well as the um, Education for Citizenship meeting in Anatolia. And also there's a meeting in December about the volunteering aspects of the Council of Europe. My disappointment was that there wasn't more. And I don't know whether this is about the speed at which the Council of Europe moves, 
they also call themselves the House of uh, Civil Society, Pavel. When you go to Strasbourg, it's very nice to be welcomed there, but I think it's quite hard to get your voice heard. And I suppose my, recommend, my wondering now is, how can we think that the policy agenda can be taken on board in the Council of Europe with its 47 member states, and some of them really needing a lot of support and help to developing volunteering, um, if they were kind of a bit half-hearted apart from your important work in this last year. We will take, we'll take a couple of questions and then we'll allow our, our panelists to answer. I see a hand over here, a hand over there. So we'll go here and there. So, so, our, so our volunteers get some exercise as well. <laughs> um, yes, hello. Susanna Savo from France Benevola and CEV. Um, this European year gave us the opportunity, uh, us who are implied in, uh, in European volunteer work, to travel and see a lot of uh, uh, conferences and, uh, or, uh, and um, uh, occasions organized by, um, by grassroots organizations. And it gave us also the opportunity, at least for me, to measure the huge distance between Europe and the grassroots volunteer, uh, which is something that I think we should bear in mind also when uh, thinking about the follow-up that we sh shall give to the year. Particularly, I think, uh, the volunteer charter, which is something I, I think very important. Uh, we should bear in mind that individual volunteers who are there and who are our, our, our base, who are those who really work for the vision that we have, should recognize themselves in, in a charter and should not be geared only to policy makers and uh, institutional, uh, it should not have only an institutional and policy message, but should be really uh, something that individual grassroots volunteers can identify with. Thank you. We had another question over here. It's all right, okay. Hello, I'm uh, Alexandra Nanaimovic from the European Civic Forum and I'm here on behalf of Volunteer Europe, taking part in a working group on the recognition of volunteering. Um, I would just like to make a comment about uh, the whole consultation and cooperation process all through the year that led to the creation of this PAVE document and uh, the elaboration of some very important recommendations for policymakers. And, um, Indeed, it was a very successful, I think, example of uh, also interinstitutional cooperation, which does not happen very often. We saw European Commission working together with the European Economic and Social Committee, working together with MEPs, and now also with the Council of Europe, even if uh, there's still some improvements to do in this interinstitutional cooperation. And on the side of civil society, it was also a very successful experience of getting also to reach the national levels, which are not very oftenly engaged in the Brussels-based dialogue. And so I would just simply make a general recommendation to um, take profit of all this grassroots expertise that civil society organizations possess by the fact that they are involving directly with volunteers, with grassroots uh, activists. And I would just invite the institutions to more oftenly and more regularly get into dialogue with this and value this field expertise because it would be a pity not to. And so maybe we could create some links with the further European years and I'm particularly thinking about the European years of hopefully to become active citizenship. Uh, we are already in relation with the European Economic and Social Committee reporter to make it become a more broader European year, not only focusing on the freedom of movement, but on all the other aspects of citizenship. So we really, we really put much hope on further with this process and uh, getting this real, real civil dialogue at the European and national and local levels with civil society organizations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Do we have any comments, responses from our panel? 
Um, <clears throat> I wanted to react to your comment. Um, yes, the distance between Europe and grassroots volunteers is sometimes, pardon? Doesn't work? The distance between Europe and uh, grassroots volunteers is sometimes very big. And we, yeah, volunteers have to recognize them in any kind of political outcome uh, of this year, not only a charter. Um, regarding the charter, I can only say that, uh, that the European Youth Forum made uh, a consultation process, a pan-European consultation process, which means that our members were uh, consulting their members. And I also want to thank other organizations, one of them is also CEV, who did the same within their organization. So uh, there were working groups established on, uh, in the member organizations of us who were working with volunteers in order to get the feedback. And the feedback that we got from them, which was very encouraging also for us, is that the volunteers were thanking because they saw their uh, feedback that they gave back to us reflected. And I would invite you to also do that um, um, now that the consultation process is open again, that you do that, exactly what you're saying, because we also want that volunteers from all over Europe feel that they, um, are, um, their needs are represented in this charter, but also in any other kind of document. And therefore, I want to comment on the other comment that was made. Um, yes, we want to also encourage the not only the European Commission, but the European institution and the Council of Europe uh, to continue this dialogue because the expertise lies with the volunteers on grassroots level. I, I would also like to make uh, two comments related to what uh, Susanna said and to what you were saying. I'm sorry, I didn't remember the name. Um, I, I just want to, um, of course, highlight once again the importance of volunteering infrastructure to deal with um, both the issues that you raised. Um, on the one hand, um, bringing the information back and forth between Europe and the grassroots level. This is where several chains of volunteering infrastructure come in. Because for me, for instance, I'm, I'm based in Romania. I don't know if I ever mentioned this during um, this, um, this panel. Um, but the information from Europe comes to me through CEV, which we are a member of. And um, we also have um, a national platform for volunteering organizations in Romania. And through that platform, we try to give the information back to the grassroots level organizations. And we always ask them to disseminate everything in their local communities. And uh, then we ask them what they need and what they want. And we feed it back up to CEV and the European Commission, hopefully. So um, this is how infrastructure makes information go around and helps everyone to feel a bit closer. Of course, Europe is very far from a village in the mountains of Romania or in any other country. Uh, but if we have proper infrastructure, um, we can make it work. And uh, the second comment I wanted to make was about um, the institutionalized channels of communication and collaboration that I mentioned um, in, my, in my presentation. I think this year has helped build up um, a successful model of cooperation and communication between a wide range of stakeholders, not only at the European level, but also at the national state level. And I would very much like to see this continuing beyond this year, uh, because um, we've experienced them, it works, information gets around, so it would be a shame to let go of what we've gained through this year. Uh, but also I think it's up to all of us to make it work, not only expect the other to start it, but also try to be active and keep it going. Thank you very much. Yep, Marta. <coughs> I think that this was uh, partly a comment, uh, partly a, a question, I think, concerning the, the Council of Europe. I can just, in a way, regret that it was not possible for, for, my, for my colleagues to be, to be more involved, uh, which could be due to many reasons, especially the budgetary restrictions and the necessity to basically really prioritize priorities. 
um, of course the best way to um, influence uh, in the future also the involvement of this organization is dealing through the member states uh, because the committee of ministers is the body that takes decisions on the plan of, of activities and really well in advance because the planning, the budgetary planning is taking place at least two years ahead. So um, sometimes it does not allow enough flexibility to be, to be on board in important initiatives. Um, and very, very briefly for this distance between grass, grassroots and the European level, I think that uh, we have on, on the European level got better in trying to get the, the feedback from the grassroots and regional national level to the European level. Sometimes what we need to indeed probably work more on is giving the feedback back on how actually we take up the things that we got from the grassroots level uh, in those documents that afterwards look like very distant European um, uh, general uh, texts. Um, Just, just a very brief comment on the distance. I think that it really depends on the application of PAVE or any other document uh, developed during the year uh, at the national and local level. And it's the task for all of us, actually, to take it, to translate it from Eurospeak to the language of volunteers and to really apply it to to, to go and, uh, and make uh, the officials at the ministries busy with our recommendations and to come up with our proposals how to achieve what we have written in nice, uh, nice words in the colorful uh, conclusions of the year. Uh, Mr. Vienkiewicz. Dwa słowa, jeśli chodzi o tę odległość obywatel, a instytucje, i, i, to jest ważna uwaga, która pozwoliła nam i jej uwzględnienie na stworzenie takiego systemu komunikacji na okoliczność Europejskiego Roku Wolontariatu, ale nie tylko, gdzie w partnerstwie publiczno-społecznym, ja o tym mówiłem, publiczno-obywatelskim, tworzyliśmy dokumenty, Przypomnę, że cała praca dotycząca polskiej części, ale też w kooperacji z Komisją Europejską nad konkluzjami wynikała z faktu, że powołaliśmy taki międzysektorowy zespół, tak? gdzie ja widzę tu nawet kolegów z sektora trzeciego, gdzie wspólnie pracowaliśmy nad tym, komunikując się tak, także z tymi, którzy na poziomie podstawowym mieli wiele do powiedzenia. Przypomnę też, że w tej komunikacji, tutaj zwracam się do członka Komitetu Ekonomiczno-Społecznego EKS-u, że myśmy mieli konferencję pod patronatem prezydenta Rzeczypospolitej, części trzeciej Europejskiego Komitetu Społeczno-Ekonomicznego, poświęconą wolontariatowi, bardzo ciekawa, z dużymi przesłaniami i wnioskami, ale też mamy dla tej komunikacji w Radzie Działalności Pożytku Publicznego, to jest taka rada dla ministra właściwego do spraw pożytku publicznego, przedstawiciela EKS-u jako członka tej rady i ta komunikacja też ma w obie strony swoje, swoje znaczenie i to jest rzeczywiście duże doświadczenie dla tego zbliżania obywatela z instytucjami. Myślę, że Europejski Rok Wolontariatu się do tego też przyczynił. Thank you very much. Very loud. Um, I would just like, uh, Lena, one final comment from the panel, and then I would like to open up the floor again to uh, the audience. Um, I was just thinking we were talking about the distance between Europe and grassroots volunteers. But I would also like to talk about the distance between Europe and Brussels based organizations. Why? Because we are the European Year of Volunteering. And we have a brilliant cooperation with the European institutions at the moment, I have to say. The Alliance works really closely, uh, the civil society works really closely with the European Commission Task Force. We work with the uh, members of the Parliament who are active during the European year, and we also try to approach the Council. But what is afterwards? And when we talk about infrastructure, we also have to talk about infrastructure in the European institutions. Is there a unit who will follow up on the brilliant work of the task force? We have an interest group in the European Parliament on volunteering, but we need a stronger, we need a committee on that. We need that volunteering is respected as its own policy area. 
And I think when we talk about infrastructure and all that, we have to talk about infrastructure at the institutions on European level, but also on national level. The continuation of the national coordinating bodies is also very important. And yeah, I just wanted to say we're reflecting on our own infrastructure and how we can improve it. But I think that uh, we have to play the ball also to the institutions. Thank you very much. Um, I saw a question here. Thank you. Just, this was just my question uh, to Mr. Trantino. Uh, there were many recommendations for the uh, European Council and for the European Commission. So my question is, which infrastructures at the European Commission um, will follow up the year and will bring forward the volunteering uh, policy agenda at the European Commission. And the other one I wanted to say is uh, I would like to invite very much the youth organizations to take part in the International Year of Active Aging and especially intergenerational solidarity. Thank you. I saw a question over there. Well, uh, two comments, not a question. Uh, the first one is the distance between this document and grassroots organizations. I think that if we translate this and we give it to small organizations in my country, in Italy, they will not understand a word of what is written on it. <clears throat> I think there's a huge distance between the everyday problem of voluntary organizations and what has been done here. I'm not saying that everything is wrong. I think that we should have made an effort to really start translating general considerations into everyday problems. I, I give you an example on the example tax provisions support for volunteering. Well, uh, here is said something about VAT. This is a huge problem for voluntary organizations because not the volunteers, but the organizations pay VAT. And in my country, and I think in every country, uh, we pay and we are not discharged of that. And this is a, a, a large amount of the money that, the little money that comes through for, to volunteer, volunteer organizations. This is a big problem. And here, I think we should have said more. I, I'm talking to the representative of the uh, uh, European Social and Economic Committee because I think we have to make an effort on that to translate and give in, uh, directives to and national governments, to, because of course, when you touch VAT, it's, it's a big problem. It's not a national problem, it's a European problem somehow. So I think we have to do something on that. The other thing that I really don't like, I'm sorry, but I have to, uh, when uh, the document says financial incentives for, empl for employers for, to, that establish employee volunteering schemes. Well, I think this is really wrong because uh, they don't give incentives to voluntary organizations and we propose to give incentives to companies to cop that uh, facilitate voluntary, uh, volunteering schemes. I think this is really wrong. I don't know what the other colleagues uh, think about that, but if a company does that, it, uh, they, it, it does it because it's convenient for them to do it, not because, and I don't think that the government should give incentives to that. Sorry. Um, thank you, uh, Renzo. Um, we have another uh, question comment from uh, Alix. Thank you. Um, I, I wanted more to make a, a comment and a suggestion. Yesterday, we, we actually met with our volunteers that were uh, involved in the working group of the Alliance exactly about the policy document and thinking, OK, now we have this policy document. It's a policy document for decision makers, so it is not for our members. And if we want them to get involved in this, how are we going to do that? So what they have all agreed to do with us is actually to take the document, 
and for each recommendation to give an example that either our scout or guide organization would understand what it means in their own reality. So then, therefore, they can go to the government to talk to them about something they know, because indeed, the policy document is not something that they would necessarily translate in the reality. But this is the game. The game is that we wanted to have a European policy agenda. So we have to make a document that actually our uh, counterparts in the European Parliament, in the European Commission will also understand because they have their own language. So I think this is where our role as organization also comes, as a, a channel uh, a element. And the second point is for you as well, Lorenzo. At the moment on the VAT element, there is a whole reform that the Commission has been undertaking. And this is the moment to voice yourself. Uh, there, there is a number of consultations that are going on, and I think this is the moment to say what we want as civil society organization, as volunteering involving organization, what we need in terms of uh, the reform of the VAT. Thank you very much. Do we have uh, maybe one or two more questions from the audience? One, two. Here, in, here and one in the back. Um, hi. Um, I had the chance to um, look briefly through the PAVE and examine the document, and I think it's a very valuable outcome of the Alliance work and efforts, and I think it will ensure a legacy for, for this year. However, I would like to um, express my regret that uh, the Charter uh, of Rights and Volunteers has not been um, somehow included within the PAVE and uh, annexed in a way or in any way. I think the Charter, um, as we've all, um, well, it's been mentioned here a lot of times, would be um, a good way um, or a good starting point, a reference point for building up um, legislative framework in many countries or in a European-wide level. So I hope that um, in future, after a new uh, round of consultations, it will be endorsed uh, much more widely. Thank you. Can I just very quickly respond to that? On page 26, there is um, the recommendation to encourage the EU to adopt a European Charter on the Rights of the Volunteer. So, yeah, it, it is, I mean, it, the concept of it is, is included in there, um, and we just want to elaborate. We're going to elaborate it much further so that we can present something. Um, I've got one, two, three more questions, then I'm going to open it to the panel. Hello. Um, I'm Mike, I'm from England, I'm the UK Relay reporter, um, and there's about 10 of us here. Yeah. Um, we've been making videos around Europe this year, um, interviewing NGOs, and I've got um, a kind of few questions, um, I'm, I'm not entirely keeping up with this, um, <laughs> it's lots of big words and things, but um, I have a few questions focusing around, firstly, uh, dialogue, and what role that plays with young people, because I've heard you talk a lot about youth this and youth that, but how do the young people be involved? How, how are young people involved in that through dialogue, um, whether that's Twitter or Facebook, um, online? Because that's one of their big platforms that they use. Um, how can they influence this stuff? And secondly, um, how can they be involved through dialogue? Um, you know, if there's something about young people, how can they be here? Um, I don't really see any young people. Um, you know, stuff like that. So I, I, I might be way off the point, but you know, how can young people be involved a bit more? I'm not really that young anymore, but I'm just curious. It's finished. I'm almost there. I've got four years left, and then I'm not young anymore. But Thank you. Um, could I just have a final show of hands um, for questions? I know I had three. So there's one, two. Those are the last two. First two. OK, thank, thank you. Uh, my name is Miklos Barabash, and came from Hungary representing uh, um, <clears throat> NGO there for the European House. Uh, just a brief comment on the, what I would call the potential of uh, volunteering. The potential of volunteering. We tend to think along traditional lines when we are speaking about uh, enabling infrastructure. And normally we think about organizations, membership, structure and so on and so forth. And we know very well that life around us, 
as angels are changing very rapidly, full of unexpected developments. And there are very serious challenges also uh, to the traditional, to the classical civil society organizations. There is the social media which is playing a very important role in that respect. I think that the potential of volunteering is, is there in the sense of somehow diminishing the very clear um, dividing lines uh, between uh, the traditional um, uh, setup, the traditional civil society structures, and those who are working in the field. Because if you look at volunteers as such, many of them, they do not even think that they belong to a civil society organization in the classical sense of the word. And at the same time, still, they are doing something what we are discussing. So I think that uh, volunteering has the capacity, has the potential, in my opinion, to respond in a creative, in a responsible manner to all these new developments what we uh, citizens of Europe are faced with. So good afternoon to everybody. Thank you. Um, I would just like to refer once again to Charter because I think Portugal now is actually a good case of a good practice of what is being done with the Charter. We're being asked uh, as National Youth Council to give some inputs about the law of um, volunteering that is being changed in Portugal. So. One of the bases and one of our bases, and since we're also in the alliance giving inputs and drinking a little bit of all the European experience and how can we build um, something common, it's giving the inputs of the charter to implement it on the national level. And this is how I think the charter can also work as an inspiration and then being flexible also in some of the points and giving um, this open space to the culture and the country in which we live in, but using the charter as a common uh, basis. So would like just to give Portugal has a good example of how it's being actually done the work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to very briefly allow our, um, each of our panelists uh, to comment because we, we are actually over time. So if we could keep it as brief as possible. Very, very briefly, uh, I think we are learning to use Twitter and Facebook in terms of involving young people in the symposium that also Pavel has just mentioned. Uh, there was a possibility also to, to react to things uh, on an ongoing basis and I promise that we will do more efforts to make it possible when we work on, uh, for instance, policy recommendations which we did in that event. So we are getting there slowly. Ja też krótko, jeśli chodzi o te nowe wyzwania wynikające z rozwoju sieci społecznościowych, między innymi Europejski Rok Wolontariatu ma swoją domenę Polski na Facebooku, więc idziemy z duchem czasu. Mój wiek może o tym nie mówi, ale generalnie sprostać tym wyzwaniom trzeba i, i takim jednym z aspektów tych wyzwań jest wejście w formułę e-wolontariatu, nowej formy komunikowania się na okoliczność pozyskiwania chętnych do, do działań bezinteresownych. Ja jedno przesłanie tylko mam z tego oglądu Państwa wniosków, że trzeba szukać być może w karcie właśnie uniwersalnych rozwiązań, które no, łączyć ideę wolontariatu no z uwzględnieniem tego wszystkiego, co mieści się w specyfice poszczególnych e, krajów i rodzaju wolontariatu i to jest przesłanie dla wszystkich dokumentów i z nich też to wynika. Three brief comments. Uh, first one to the question, which infrastructure in the European Commission uh, concerning volunteering after the European Year of Volunteering? Well, I can't give you an answer because I'm not representing European Commission. 
<laughs> so I hope that we'll get some, uh, some, some reply uh, during the conference on how are we going to, uh, to build on, uh, on the achievements and how are we going to, to keep the agenda <coughs> visible. Uh, what we were suggesting as the ESC already in 2006 was a, white paper, was a white paper process, which would ensure that actually there, there are consultations, that there is some, uh, some, actually some direction, some common direction. So maybe a white paper, maybe an open method of coordination, who knows. Uh, the second thing, uh, concerning translations, Alex already covered uh, of that, uh, of that, that, uh, that, that thing, but I would like to show you that in our section, in section three concerning legal frameworks, you have colorful boxes with the examples from uh, the national legislation, which hopefully could give, uh, give an insight how even the issue of VAT is being dealt with uh, at the national level, because there are examples of good practices where VAT is not required to be paid by volunteer organizations. And last but not least, employee volunteering schemes and their support. Well, uh, I come from a membership-based organization which uh, works with, uh, with volunteers in, uh, in, uh, the free, in their free time. The concept of employee volunteering is quite new. Uh, and I think that actually it, uh, it deserves some kind of support as well, because this is about, uh, about the, the joint goal to have active citizens who are aware of, the, uh, of, the, of their responsibilities towards the society. Um, I wanted to just uh, uh, propose, because our time is short, that the Rayleigh reported it was quite, uh, having the question about youth involvement and uh, usage of Facebook and Twitter. I'm happy to talk to you afterwards. The European Youth Forum is working a lot with that, of course. Um, in general, I wanted to use this moment to say we, work, we talk about an ab uh, enabling environment for volunteers. And I want to talk about networking, because I don't know when we all will actually meet together again in this formation. So many people working so long and so intensively on volunteering. Yes, we all talk about that we will carry on the legacy, but it's now and here that we have to exchange business cards and share the projects that we are working on, how to implement the PAVE. So I would encourage you to do that, to approach each other, to listen to each other, which projects you're working, to not double efforts, etc., so that we do this here in order to really create an enabling environment for volunteering in Europe. Yes, um, just a very, very quick word. Um, of course, volunteering infrastructure is very important, as I think you are all very well convinced after this panel. Um, it, it, it needs a lot of investment, not only in terms of uh, resources, but also in terms of time and commitment uh, from us all, be either non-profit organizations, volunteer-involving organizations, institutions at all levels. Uh, but I think it is worthwhile investing in the volunteering infrastructure because it is, in the end, what makes volunteering work. And if you think well, one way or another, all of you are engaged somehow in one of those diverse structures that are part of the volunteering infrastructure. So it is actually about us all and about what helps us do our job better and, of course, enable volunteers to involve. Um, so I, I hope that we will all take all the ideas, all the documents, not only PAVE, but everything else that is in terms of documents, and we will do our best to take them forward to really create the enabling environment that in the end makes us all do our work better. Um, thank you very much, uh, esteemed panelists, colleagues. Before I let you go, um, I would just like to try and, and wrap up the, the, the many kind of many faceted discussion that we've uh, that we've had. I think one of the one of the main things that um, that we're seeing is that there there is uh, a very um, a, a very high need to to continue and foster the dialogue that, that has been created in in the running up and, and throughout the year and, and also in the in the follow up. Um, and this dialogue is, is not only between institutions and civil society, and it's not only between civil society and Brussels, um, 
back to the grassroots level, but it is something that definitely needs to happen. Um, I think it's more like a, a web between institutions among civil society organizations themselves, um, and, and and really getting this this uh, and this coordination and 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 trying not to duplicate work um, amongst all stakeholders and getting a broad support base and this includes civil society this includes institutions this includes the academic sector this includes uh, the private sector as well um, and the recommendations that come out of the this this collaboration I think that the, the pave is a very good starting point um, but the and and, and in, in agreement, um, but what there is a need, I, I think that there, we need to work together also in making the recommendations more concrete and seeing how how can this the, the visionary uh, the, the visions that we see in the pave that we've outlined in the pave actually be implemented and, and what tools and what actions are needed to achieve uh, to reach these points. Um, I think also uh, what we need to be very very conscious of is that um, volunteering is is a lifelong. Um, Engage, well, not lifelong engagement, you can do it at all ages. Um, it starts uh, at any age. Um, and that the enabling environment and enabling policy environment also must follow this life cycle as well of volunteering. Um, and, and we shouldn't just try and focus on, on, on one specific age group and also not compartmentalize, I think, but, but really ensure that enabling environment is very much, um, has a very holistic approach. Um, it's also very important that the policy recommendations that are coming out are also linked to the upcoming years. I think that the, the upcoming years of, of uh, active aging and solidarity between generations and um, the hopefully year of the citizen in 2013 um, will provide a, a, a window of opportunity to, um, to move forward the recommendations that we've already outlined in the PAVE. Um, and I think that a, a, a charter uh, of sorts will, will, is, is one of the stepping stones um, which will facilitate also the, uh, the creation of an enabling, and, uh, enabling environment through um, promoting legal, legal frameworks and, um, and, and promoting the infrastructure. So without further ado, um, bon appétit and uh, please go to lunch. Thank you very, very much. <laughs>